Hey there, this is Stan, K9SWX, and today we're going to be talking about how to use your computer as a digital police scanner. So before we get into the software and hardware and everything you need to make that happen, let's start off with what is a scanner? Well, basically it's a device that receives radio frequencies. Uh, it could be police, fire, uh, airplane, ham radio, railroad, weather, and other types of services. So your next question is, well, what's the difference between your regular analog scanner and a digital scanner? Well, usually a regular scanner, um, you put in the actual frequencies of the service you want to hear. So say your airport uses 120.8 megahertz for ground. Well, you'd poke that in and you always know that you're going to hear the ground station there. Um, also, with the regular scanner, the analog scanner, you're going to usually only get a couple modes. You're going to have your FM mode, which is going to be your usually on your police, fire, EMS, that kind of stuff. And then AM mode would be for like aviation. So a digital scanner is a little different. Uh, it will receive those regular FM and AM modes, but it'll also do other modes like P25. Um, it's also able to track systems that use what's called control channels, which is a data channel, to determine what frequency um, a certain group, like police, fire, will be on at any given moment. So why do you need a police scanner? Can't you just stream that online? Sure, um, you could go to a site like this, like Broadcastify, wonderful site, has probably thousands of, well, yeah, it has over you know 7,000 feeds, which a lot are you know, police, fire, scan, um, EMS, that kind of stuff. Um, great site but you're at the control, the mercy of the, the person running that feed um, and what they have programmed into their scanner that they're using to stream. So if, you, if they're streaming police and fire and EMS and snow plows or something, you know, and there's a big event going on, uh, you, you might not hear the exact frequencies or channels that you want to be listening to. And then again, if their internet goes down or something, you you know you can't hear their their feed, so it's kind of useless in that regard. I think it, it just gives you more control to have your own scanner. So how much does a regular scanner cost? Well, um, we'll go over to the Uniden website here, and as you can see, their cream of the crop. Um, digital scanner does all kinds of stuff 700 bucks um, if you scroll down here um, their handheld is 650 um, they kind of have a I'm not yeah I guess this is a digital they've got a, a CB slash scanner for 400 I'm not sure how that works but anyway um, and then you've got more scanners down here I mean we're talking well, anywhere from you know four hundred to seven hundred dollars here and then as you get down further this one is not a digital scanner this one isn't either these are all analog scanners down here but yeah seven hundred bucks is a lot of money you know they're great scanners from what I've heard um, I don't I don't own any of the digital unitins at the moment but um, they're a little pricey um, so if you got the money, go for it. So is it legal to use a scanner? Well, at least here in the U.S., um, as long as you're not using it to commit a crime, usually you're okay to use a scanner. Now, that being said, um, there are restrictions about using a scanner in your car. Um, I know some states you can use a scanner in your car if you are a amateur radio operator. Some states you can't use one at all. So it's uh, I'm going to... I'm going to refer you to your local law, uh, local laws about that. I don't have any links to those. I haven't found any official links, um, but I would check with your local jurisdiction and uh, see what they say about that. Um, but for this, the purpose of this um, tutorial, uh, I'm going to assume you're not using this, uh, what I'm going to show you in a little bit, in the car. And finally, 
Um, can you listen to encrypted transmissions? No. Um, whether you use the software I'm about to show you or a physical digital scanner, um, you're not going to be able to de decrypt those transmissions. Um, a lot of departments use those encryption methods to, you know, discuss sensitive matters. You know, if there's a school shooting or, um, you know, a manhunt or something, they don't want, they don't want the bad, the bad guy to, you know, be able to hear in on some of that stuff. So, so what do you need to get started with all of this? Well, you need a computer. Um, this, this software will run on Windows, it'll run on Mac, it'll run on Linux. So should be good with whatever computer you have. Uh, you're also going to need um, an SDR, and I recommend this RTL SDR V3 with the antenna kit. And this is it's around 45 bucks plus tax shipping at the time of this recording. But this works well, uh, especially with the... Um, higher frequencies that most of the systems are going to be using these little antennas as long as you're pretty close to the the transmitting towers you should be all right uh, the next thing you're going to need is the software and we're going to be using a software called SDR trunk and I'll put a link to this in the description but it's it's free software and that's kind of what it looks like you got to a waterfall here and this is all your activity and all your frequencies it's picking up and and then it'll give you more information down here we'll get into that a little bit later once we get the software and then one other thing you're going to want to check is your frequencies uh, the best place I know to do that is radioreference.com and you want to go to databases and then just hit browse and then pick your click on your state I'm in Illinois and then your county and then somewhere down here I've got a couple in my area uh, my local one that I'm going to use for this demo is our county MedCAD system which basically it's the police and fire and EMS and there's a few other um, entities on this system but we're going to go to that one and basically what you want to do is find um, find the frequencies that your system uses so you'll come down here these are your control frequencies or well, the red ones are the control frequencies and then the other frequencies are the ones that are actually being used for voice when they you know they actually transmit so um, the issue here is you may need more than one SDR dongle um, if it's outside of the 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 RTL SDR has um, a range of 2.4 megahertz so as you can see our uh, this particular system I'm looking at starts at 851.0625 and then it goes up to 853.825 for one of the control channels but if that's not your main control channel, you can get away with one dongle probably by using one of these other control frequencies. You just got to see which uh, which control frequency is kind of the strongest for you that works the best. But anyway, that's you'll need to do that for your system and figure out what kind of system it is. Now this one is a uh, P25 phase one system. So that's this software will do that. Um, if you click on, I think it's a wiki. Yeah. It'll tell you all the different things, this types of systems that it'll, that it'll do. It will do phase one and phase two. Um, our state police uses a system, uh, it's called Starcom 21 and they're starting to switch to phase two and some, some of the older digital scanners will only do phase one so that's something to think about but for this for this software will be good for for either one of these but it'll do all kinds of stuff so uh, the first thing you'll need to do if you've already got a uh, one of these dongles is, is go ahead and plug it into your computer 
All right, so we need to download this SDR trunk software. So before we do that, let's scroll down here and click on Getting Started. And when you do that, they will tell you what to look for to download the right file for your system. So if you're on Windows, you'll want to look for the download that says SDR trunk Windows, blah, blah, blah. I am on a Mac and I'm on an M1 system, so I am going to do SDR Trunk OS X A Arch 64. So we should be able to come up here to download and then scroll down here. This is the, as of this ver, um, video, this is um, version 0.6.0 .0 is the latest version that came out December 16th, 2023. But if there's a newer version by the time you watch this video, go ahead and get that. Uh, if you scroll down, should have, here we go, under Assets, uh, here are all the downloads. So if you're on Windows, you'll do this one. And if you're on the Intel Mac, you'll do this one. And I am on an M1, so I'm going to do this one right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it. It's going to download. All right, so we're going to go up here to Downloads, and then I'm going to open the folder, and I'm going to double-click the zip file. Automatically extracts it for me on the Mac. I'm going to open the folder and then go into the bin folder. Now, before you run the SDR trunk software, you need to uh, go ahead and right-click on the Java and then open because that's going to allow us to use this in the future. Because if you just do SDR trunk, it's going to fail on Java because it doesn't know, it thinks it's a bad program. So just hit open. So that window goes away. All right, so now that we've done the Java thing, let's right click on SDR trunk and hit open. And it is going through all that. Okay, so now we have the program open. And as you can see, the waterfall is showing us that our tuner is receiving stuff, even though it's on the 100 megahertz FM band. Um, what we want to do is go to the playlist editor. And then we're going to click on radio reference. And you'll need a premium subscription to uh, radio reference if you don't have one of those. So, um, But for this example, I've already logged in with my credentials. And then you'll pick your country, your state, and your county. And then for the system, I've got the one I want to do here. So the system view shows you all your frequencies here. And what I want to do is create a new alias list. And I usually just name it whatever it's called, whatever the system's called. So I'll just put in mdice. And then you want to go over here to talk group. And this is all your channels per se um, but you can do all that what I do I just uh, import all but you want to make sure you put it in that new alias list you just created so we're going to do import all talk groups and then we're going to go back over to system view and hit create channel configuration so now here's our new system and if we go to aliases and choose mdice, we have all of the different, like here's some police, and then uh, law and court security, fire. And you could rename these, like this says fire op one. You could just click down there and say like fire operations one or something. And then hit save or whatever you want to do. Um, I'm going to go back to channels and we're just going to hit play and see what happens. Now, when we do that, the first time it's going to ask us to do this setup JMBE library. So go ahead and hit yes. And you're going to hit create library. Um, if there's an update, go ahead and hit yes. Okay. Create library. This is blah, blah, blah. Read all that. If you agree, hit yes. So this is going to create a little library. Okay, so we got that done. Close that. 
Now we're going to hit play. And let me minimize this. This is your control channel. So that tells me that we're receiving um, the information. Oh. And you can see over here that it says Patrol 2. And if you click down, if you click the control channel and hit events, you can really kind of see like all the transmissions and what, who's doing what here and what the frequency is. It's kind of cool. All right, so if you look at our signal here, this is our control channel. The signal's pretty weak. So what we want to do is check out the RTL SDR website as they have an antenna guide to how to adjust this antenna. And I'll put this link in the description. But when you get this antenna, there's two different antennas it comes with. It comes with a large antenna, which kind of goes from 70 megahertz to 285 megahertz. And then you've got a smaller antenna that does 445 to almost a gigahertz. So I've got the little one on here now, but as you can see, I've got all four sections out. So we're not quite in the right spot to get the best signal. So what we need to do, this, this system that I'm on is in the 850 megahertz range. So it's just probably two sections or less, but more than one section. So what you want to do here, and I'm going to pull up, uh, let me get back to our, we can watch the signal as I do this, but I'm going to push these in. We're going to go to two here. So we're going to leave it at two. As you can see, the signal up here has already gotten stronger. Now if I move the antenna around a bit, if I move it a little closer, turn it, you're going to see it get more red. And the other signals are also going to hopefully improve a little bit. But yeah, if you turn this a little bit or move it into a window or something, I've got it on my desk, so I don't have the greatest, uh, <laughs> greatest spot to be receiving. But as you can see, we are receiving stuff. If I unmute this, oops, I think they just, there we go. Sure. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're getting stuff now, but this signal is a lot stronger. So 10, 4, 4, 4, 7, Metcalf, that's just something you can you can check out. Metcalf three thirty six. I'll take care of that noise complaint. Three thirty six, ten four. Thank you. Shall you clear ninety with a warning? Ten more. Metcalf three seven twenty three. Three seven ten four. Now one cool thing is that you might have just seen is you can hear more than one transmission at the same time. So one will come through the left uh, speaker or headphone, and the other one will come through the right side. So one cool thing you can do with this is record the audio from any of the talk groups. So if you go back into the playlist editor, and under aliases, you go to record, you can select whichever ones you want, or you can do a select all and move them over here. And then what happens is they show up in this folder here see as you see them come in there they go so if we click on one of these 761 your radio is unreadable again can you repeat that's pretty neat i just got it over here let's click another one Dead for, thank you. and it puts the talk group id and the actual name that it imported from radio reference so if you just, you can set just one as well. So if you just wanted to record all the police, you could do that or all the fire or whatever. So that's a pretty cool feature. So we barely scratched the surface with this program, but if you want to learn more on what it'll do, um, you can go to the SDR trunk website and go to one of these user manuals and there's all kinds of stuff you can learn about it. I mean, you can even stream, use this to stream to Broadcastify, make your own scanner stream for others to enjoy. So I hope this has helped. Um, if you have any questions about the software, put them in the comments below and I'll do my best to help you out. And I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one. 73. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and make sure to ding my bell to be notified when I post new videos. Thanks again, and 73 from K9SWX.